she won't let me. Hello and welcome to Feast for the Soul, the 17th year of Feast for the Soul. And I'm Sue Cooper and I welcome you to day 21 of the feast. Um, feast is this year and every year based on peace. It's, we're a peace movement. And this year we're particularly looking at peace through grace and ease. And as we do that, we're also looking at building compassionate communities and encouraging community engagement on the feast as a feast family, but also in your own in your own hometowns. So um, feast today is welcoming, and I'm welcoming, Phil Goldberg. I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome Phil. Let me introduce you, Phil. Um, Phil has been studying Indian spiritual traditions for more than 50 years as a practitioner, teacher and author. He's regarded as a leading expert on the historical transmission of Indian spiritual and philo philosophical heritage to the West. Um, Phil's one of my teachers. I've been studying with him for the last four years. So it's an absolute delight to, to welcome him today. Um, he's a public speaker, a spiritual counsellor, counselor, an interfaith minister, and was trained as a transcendental meditation teacher in 1970 and taught the practice for much of the 1970s. He's led uh, workshops, lectures, and taught at major venues, both in person and as well as online. Phil is uh, a celebrated author and co-author and the couple of books that um, have changed my life, um, Yogananda, the biography of Yogananda, which is an accompaniment to the autobiography of Yogananda, and uh, American Veda. And I'm sure Phil will talk a little bit about that at some stage after the meditation. So, so Phil, thank you so much for joining us today. It's an, an absolute delight. And... I pass the mantle to you for, for your guided meditation. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. That was very kind and uh, generous. <clears throat> and I appreciate it very much. Um, hello, everybody, wherever you are. I'm honored and happy to be with you today. Um, We'll be spending most of our time in silence after uh, I lead you into the beginning of the meditation form. Uh, but first, some introductory uh, remarks. There are, as you know, many, many forms of meditation, and sometimes it's hard to sort out the differences among them and there are differences, and different methods would naturally have different outcomes. Um, two distinctions I like to make is, one, is it a meditation form that once you learn it, you can do on your own? The second has to do with the method itself and the degree of effort or uh, mental control that's required. There are, there is a wide spectrum on the scale of rigorous mind control to doing nothing on the other end. And I have always favored and was trained to teach non-effortful meditation, effortless meditation. They're all valuable. They all have their good qualities and points. And I favor effortless meditation that once, Matt, once you learn, you can do on your own. That's what we'll... That's what I'll lead you in today. But 
let me explain why. Um, in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, uh, they define yoga, meaning the state of unified consciousness, as the cessation of the fluctuations of the mind. And the next verse, the sutra, says that when one, the mind, the fluctuations cease, when the mind is quiet, one abides in one's essential nature, one's true nature, and realizes the true self. That's the purpose of most forms of meditation. And meditation has become synonymous with quieting the mind. The difficulty comes in when people think that means I have to quiet my mind. <laughs> I have to make my mind quiet. I have to stop it from doing all that thinking and sensation uh, experiences. And that means I must control it. The problem is attempting to control the mind or manipulate thought is a form of activity in itself. So you're actually trying to stop the mind's doing by doing something in your mind. And that is contradictory. You're trying to still the mind and the trying makes the mind active. So the mind doesn't quiet through force or willpower or suppression. The harder you try to do that, the more likely you are to get agitated and um, maybe have a headache. So in the traditional form of meditation I was trained in, and you'll find in most effective forms of meditation, even forms that require a little concentration and focus, the quieting comes when you stop doing that. So in this form, there's no suppression. There's no forceful concentration, no attempt to keep the mind in one place, focused and concentrated, and no attempt to stop thoughts from coming or to suppress them. The principle is that it is natural for the mind to quiet down. Like everything else in nature, the mind seeks and is moving toward, well, in one sense, moving toward greater happiness and fulfillment and peace, but it, it, it seeks a natural state of equilibrium. So effortless forms of meditation allow the mind to settle down rather than by creating the right conditions for that to happen rather than trying to force it to. By analogy, if you have a pot of boiling water and you want it to settle down, you don't go around popping every bubble on the surface of the water. You lower the flame. You, and then you allow it to reach its equilibrium. When a pond is muddy and in turmoil, you can't quiet it by effort. You could block the wind or wait for the wind to stop, and then it will settle down by itself. So that's the principle. No effort no manipulation, no mind control. There is a gentle doing. 
as in most forms of meditation, there is some beginning object of attention that's kind of a on-ramp to effortless meditation. Many forms use putting the attention on the breath or other parts of the body. I like the use of mantras, the traditional mantras in the uh, yogic tradition are Sanskrit sounds, and I like them because the quality of sound resonating uh, in a appropriate way is in itself healing and soothing and uh, has good effects. So in this form of meditation, we will use a mantra. I will guide you in the beginning, repeating certain principles, and then we'll meditate together in silence, and then I'll enter <laughs> once or twice along the way and hope I don't disturb your deep, peaceful meditation. Um, so if we'll all get comfortable and uh, ready to sit in a comfortable chair or cross-legged or as you uh, feel most comfortable with your uh, back as straight as, uh, as you can without straining. No strain, no mental strain, no physical strain. Be comfortable, but vertical from the waist up to the extent that is uh, easy for you. And don't hesitate to adjust your position. This is not a Zen monastery. You're, no one's going to hit you with a stick if you move or change your position. And let's close our eyes. And notice that when you withdraw the sense of sight, the mind and body naturally begin to settle down a bit. So allow any bodily tension or tightness to dissipate. If your attention is drawn to a part of your body, just let it rest there until it's comfortable. And notice that thoughts and sensations arise and dissolve of their own accord. The mind naturally thinks that's its job. And in this meditation form, which in India is called bhavati dhyan, um, we don't try to manipulate those thoughts, and we don't pay any attention to the content of the thoughts. As a t-shirt I have says, meditation, it's not what you think. It's not about the content of the thought. All thoughts, they arise and dissolve, and they're replaced by other thoughts. Just notice that that's natural. And we make no attempt to manipulate the mind or make it stop. Just allow the thoughts to uh, come and go, like watching leaves blow by your window. And notice that you can introduce a thought of your choosing, a word, a sound, an image, with just the merest intention, no effort. So for, for example, if I were to say, think your name, 
or think your address. It just automatically appears in your mind. It probably already did. That's how effortlessly the sound we call a mantra is used in this method. No effort, just a slight intention. So if you've ever been given a mantra by a teacher, a qualified teacher, um, feel free to use it here. Otherwise, um, we'll use a traditional mantra. Uh, now, I should add that um, mantras in different lineages are usually assigned individually as an initiation. Uh, we obviously can't do that here, so we'll all use this uh, traditional mantra that's used often in meditation and in group settings. And that is a two-syllable sound. So hum. <clears throat> so hum. So hum. Please say it quite aloud. Make sure you're muted. Say it aloud with me. So hum. So hum. Continue. And say it quieter. and more softly. And quieter. And now just mentally, without moving your tongue or lips. Simply allow the mantra to resonate inside you. Allow it to repeat. Make no attempt to maintain a rhythm or a volume or even a consistent pronunciation. Just allow it to resonate in whatever form it naturally assumes, and it will change. If the pronunciation changes, let it change. If it becomes softer and vague, just a feeling, that's fine. If it's clear and more distinct, that's also fine. Whatever happens, let it be. And very importantly, when you notice the mantra is starting to fade away, let it go. Don't clutch it. Don't cling to it. It's not meant to be there all the time. Just release and be in the silence. And then at some point you might think, oh yes, I'm supposed to have a mantra here. And if it's comfortable, simply reintroduce it in that same effortless way with just an intent. And thoughts and sensations and feelings will come and go. Let them come and go. Don't resist. Don't suppress. Don't wish they weren't there. And we'll meditate in this way together for 15 or so minutes. And then I'll have some further instruction.
Now, ease off any intention Allow the mind to just relax in neutral. Allow your attention to rest in your body. Allow any residual tightness or tension or release of Tightness dissipate. And rest your attention in the area of your heart. And allow the light and love that emanates from the heart to fill your whole body. And let's extend that peace and light and love to our surroundings Fill your room, fill your home, fill your city, fill your country. And share it to all the continents to North America and South America, extending it outward, Africa, Europe. Let it rest on troubled places like Ukraine and the Middle East and send it to Asia and the Pacific Islands and fill the whole planet, our troubled planet, with light and love. As you are extending yourself, your essence, beyond its location in your body and realizing it has no limits and it extends beyond the planet. Send it to the whole solar system and the galaxy and all the billions of galaxies, all the same essence as you are, and fill the entire universe. And bring it back. and be with your with that feeling in your body as you're resting here in what seems to be a solid form and when you're ready open your eyes and return to the waking state of consciousness.
And as you're coming out, a few reminders, should you choose to do this on your own? No effort, no control, no manipulation. Just allowing the natural tendency of the mind to do what it does. And if at any time it seems really difficult to even have the intention of thinking a mantra because you're so agitated, just let your attention rest on your body. Allow that activity to dissipate. And when it's comfortable, bring the mantra back in. And always come out slowly. It takes time. You're deep in meditation. You don't want to just jump out. Okay? Loka samasta sukino bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free and at peace. Thanks.